we go. Finally got the old Dirty Max out of here. We're gonna start on some fun stuff today. So, I decided first thing I'm gonna do because it's gonna be the quickest and the easiest is the old K5 Blazer here with the LS in it. Uh, we got some new carpet for the interior here and a whole new painless wiring harness that needs to go in. So, I am gonna get started and we're going to rip out all of the guts here. So this is gonna be a pretty straightforward, very easy task getting this stripped down. Got Mr. Jarman coming over. He's gonna give me a hand lifting this back seat out of here and getting it to the ground. Um, and then yeah, we'll just uh, zip through this real quick. And then I'll show you some stuff along the way and hopefully this makes a little bit of entertaining video, but we're gonna make this puppy a reliable driver again and then hopefully make a few more upgrades along the way. All right, so I've unbolted the first thing, which is the rear seat. And I just want to point out a good way of telling if the old guy has ever worked on something is you end up with two different size bolts and stuff. So, you know, I had to have a 13 16 and a three quarter to get that seat out because one bolt was a three quarter and the rest were 13 16. This guy, man, but we're free. There's also, check this out. This is why we can't have nice things. This right here. Why is there a rotten corn cob under there? Eww. <laughs> Not too shabby, I tell you. Not too shabby. So, let's see what we did. We got the interior gutted. There's a whole bunch of filth that was up under this carpet. So we're going to have to vacuum all this out and get it cleaned up, but Carpets out, seats are all out, center console, tunnel, everything. So I'm gonna get this floor cleaned up. I'm gonna strip off this gauge, gauge cluster cover thing because I want that repainted. Pull this off, I need to get to all the wiring anyway because we are going to gut this wiring out. The more I stare at this, the more we may make some other slight changes as well. I think we want to get rid of the HVAC box that's on the firewall. The engine bay is ugly, man. Let's go take a gander at it. I mean, is this, was this LS swapped before LS swapping was cool? Yes. Is it just incredibly ugly? Yes. So we're gonna clean up a ton of this wiring and I wanna get that whole HVAC assembly box out of there. Maybe we can seal up that hole or do something there. I don't actually know. Uh, but yeah, there's a lot of cleaning that has to happen here. Uh, this steering gear, if you can see it down there, flexes the frame rail when you turn so we need to support that I look like potentially this exhaust over here maybe touching the frame rail but I think it might be clearing just ever so slightly um, but yeah we got some things to address under here I don't like this janky ghetto hose adapter -ness that's going on here either Maybe we can just get one solid hose. I don't know if that's gonna actually happen in this process or what, but like all of this shit, that's gotta go. The PCM mount is fine. I don't mind that at all, but I gotta clean it up. Well, like always, my scatterbrain took over and I just kind of kept going. But we'll take a gander at what we got done today. So nothing on the engine bay side yet. That is tomorrow's problem. But we stripped this whole interior out. I have not vacuumed it yet like I planned on, but I got the gauge bezel cover off, the glove box is out, all the side panels are out, everything is exposed, even the tailgate is down. Sorry, Jarman, calls you all the way down here and it turns out it can open. It was just a pain in the rear, bud. Um, but yeah, that's what we got. You can see it used to be this ugly mustard yellow color and now it's synergy green, but uh, old guy and the kids at the school have signed up to paint the floor well i don't know if they know they signed up yet but they are they're signed up so once i get this harness in before the carpet and the interior goes back in i will literally bolt the seat in drive it up to there to that paint and body school and we will get this floor sprayed with some sort of black or texture or something just to protect it you can see it kind of rusting out in places then we'll go to putting this interior back together. But uh, yeah, for tonight, that's it. And we will pick up tomorrow and start ripping harness out. Do I got a story time for y'all. So here we are. I am back to finally put this wiring harness in the blazer. We'll take a look, see. You know, I got it all stripped out earlier. Um, and we got it cleaned up, ready to go for the harness. That was five days ago, six days ago now. 
All right, so how did we get to a point where we're five days later? Uh, I was making some serious headway, right? Uh, for those of you all that follow this channel and actually know us, this will be no surprise for anybody that's new and planning on sticking around. This is going to become a common story, but it's probably going to be ridiculous to you. Um, here's what we got. I got this whole thing stripped out. We're ready to put the harness in. We've had this harness for like eight months. There's this little Pepsi refrigerator over here. That harness for this blazer was sitting on that shelf of that refrigerator for six months, maybe seven months, right? Nobody taking the time to do this job yet. Went to go grab that harness. It was no longer there. The old guy apparently decided that wasn't a good place for it. He was gonna move it. He claims to have put it in the blazer. Nobody can locate this thing. We spent days looking for it. You know, it's a $700 freaking painless harness. Gone, vanished, thin air. Nobody can find it, it's missing. He ultimately goes and buys a new one. So here we go, we got the new harness here. We're finally gonna open it. Put it in he also in the meantime if you put a flat surface in this shop he will find it and he will throw shit on it so we now have all this stuff over here for no reason i'm um, pretty sure this came out of his delta and he just piled it on this tailgate so we're gonna deal with that also now in the meantime i did pull the trigger and in this box and this little box up here we have dakota digital gauges we're gonna put in at the same time so we are finally there we have everything we need uh, we're going to install this harness now there was an additional two days added to this ordeal because I did get a pig delivered yesterday uh, And boy, I'll tell you another crazy story So we got a pin back on the back 40 back there that I planned on using a little overgrown hasn't had any livestock in it recently uh, Went back there with a weed eater uh, a few days ago to try and start cleaning it out get it ready for this hog uh, I hit some I don't know if they're Africanized killer bees or a hornet's nest. There's got to be a bee of some sort because I had so many stingers in me. I had one with my weed eater, man. I got stung about 50 times the other day. My mom spent 30 minutes pulling stingers out of my body in every which way once I finally found her and got all that going. So that's been miserable. So I had to pivot and uh, we're taking care of that bee problem potentially. But uh, in the meantime, I just picked a different pen. We repaired that and got that up, up to snuff. So. Yeah, we're finally moving in and grooving. We're gonna put some harnesses in today though. Hopefully it'll be one day, but it could be a two day ordeal. Um, either way, that's what we got. So, you know, not really a surprise to anybody that knows us, but we lost a harness. Oh, oh, here's another crazy thing. Another crazy part of this story. So not only does he lose this harness, this is the dumb luck that that old guy has. He goes to Painless to get a replacement harness, talks with the folks there, cause that's what he does. Not only does he get them to honor a 25% off coupon that was six years old that the owner gave him, they also have now volunteered to bring in our 65 Malibu, my grandma's old beat up green one. I don't know if y'all have seen that video. Drug it out of a pasture in Iowa, got it running again. It runs and drives, but it's in terrible shape. It needs floorboards, it needs paint, it needs, it needs everything, absolutely everything. But uh, we don't have a key to it and they were talking and they want to make a harness for that apparently. So. They, in a couple months, want that car and they're going to build an entire harness and install it for free. So that's wild. I mean, how do you back into that by losing a harness? I'll never understand it, but needless to say, here we are. We're going to put it in. Let's see. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get this box here opened and then lay it out and we will see what we got. I'd offer these to somebody if they had a K K5 they were trying to make stock, but somebody installed these super terrible aftermarket gauges in there and it's just, it's terrible. Terrible, I say. So they're going right where they belong in the trash can. Goodbye. Uh, time to start gutting some wiring. I'm not going to record much of pulling the wiring out or any of that. If anything interesting pops up, I'll obviously grab it, but I, I doubt that's going to be the case. Woo, woof. This puppy came with all kinds of stuff in a freaking novel to read about install. Sheesh. This, in theory, though, should only be powering, like, the radio, the HVAC unit, and all the lights. Uh, everything else will be not used, essentially. Uh, they did give us a nice painless performance sticker. We're going to save that for the very end, and we'll put it on this tailgate with the other million stickers on here. But, uh, yeah, for now, I'm going to look through this manual. We're going to figure out where this fuse panel mounts, and then we'll start stripping stuff out and getting this installed, and then we'll route it out from there. Look at that pile on the ground. Holy guacamole. There was not much 
I was actually painless about that. My hands are all busted up, slamming them into different parts of the truck, but gosh, am I ready to get this thing put in. So, I'm start stabbing. Ooh-wee. Picking up with the not so painless wiring of this blazer. So, what do we got here? I got the turn signal, ignition, stuff all hooked up to the column. Uh, I have a new headlight switch coming, but I pinned out the wiper switch, which you have to pin yourself accordingly. The headlight switch is ready to go. Um, we got the AC controls are hooked up. So the only thing left on this interior, the fuse box is obviously still mounted. So the only thing we have left to do here is I have this gauge cluster bundle here, which is there. So I got the Dakota Digital gauges, which are laying over here. You'll notice they are much thinner than that big bulky thing that came out, which is good because I need to mount the control box, which is over here. Like this puppy here. So my plan is to mount it directly behind the gauges here, just like so, right? Um, so what I did, this is the old guy's idea. So I found this little piece of scrap plate and then I drilled and tapped the holes so I can screw it to that. So now what I'm getting ready to do, uh, and then before I realized I needed to make some, some little updates here, is uh, I'm going to take this off of here now. I'm going to drill and then countersink some bolts in the middle of that. We'll put some paint on there or something, clean this up. We will mark this little deal here with two spots where I want it to line up. And then we will drill some holes there and then we'll put some bolts through and bolt that plate to this bracket here and then screw that to it and then it's mounted and good. Then I can clean up these wires and that will all be done. And we gotta find anything that we're not using that's live. We'll uh, have to get removed or sealed up or something, I guess. And I still gotta pull the wire through for the door jam switches, which are these. I don't even know if they work, but I'm going to hook them up anyway because I want them. Um, I don't think any of these random plugs here, like down, down here, get used. I got the cigarette lighter stuff over there I got to figure out. And then just some more courtesy lightings and a door switch light. Um, and then this long harness here comes back that to a dome light that used to go in the cab up there, I think. Uh but we're not gonna do that. So I think what I might do is add some wire to this back part here and then run some extra courtesy lighting in the back that work off of the door jam switch uh, just so that the back seat can see. And then yeah, once all that's done, we can move to the engine side of it and get all that hooked up. Oh, not to mention we gotta hook up the, uh, I got, this is the check engine light wire that goes up here to the, to the box and then these couple of wires here these are from this is all it takes to make the ls harness run so there's three wires so gotta hook those up uh yeah and hopefully i keep saying this but hopefully this blazer drives out of the shop today <sighs> checking in this is taking way longer than i thought it would painless my booty nah i mean this is way better than trying to build a harness on your own at least everything's pretty much cut to length uh the biggest issue here is that they try to make it so universal with all the chevy stuff that like there are no none of the plugs are on you it's like build your own plugs and everything's way too long because it could also work for a long bed so you have to trim everything down it's a bummer man but i got all of the wiring routed down the frame rail poked out back here so tail lights are up and then i got i ended up taking the harness from the fuse panel here and running it down over the tranny tunnel and hooking up to the starter on this side then i'm gonna bring the main power cable up and up out the side of the engine over here like the normal wires route this is the fuel pump drive wire it's not staying up here it's getting sucked back down to run with those I'm going to put that on a relay, actually, because that's how it should have been done the whole time. 
So I'll have the MIDI fuse for the whole power and a relay mounted up there, kind of next to the battery, but not too next to the battery. Uh, that will clean up a lot of the top side of this. Well, used to be a ton of wiring up here, which is really funny because it's not like this is a pretty engine bay whatsoever, but you know, practice. Practice makes perfect for the future when we can make a pretty engine bay. Hopefully, one day, maybe. I don't know, but yeah, uh, that's kind of kind of where I'm at with this. Um, I don't really even remember the last time I picked up this camera because, you know, I imagine y'all don't want to watch me struggling ratting all these wires, but I got the Dakota Digital Box mounted back there. Everything's bundled up. Everything in the interior is hooked up, including the door jam switches and lights, other than these, these overhead dome lights, but they're going to go in the side panels. I'm going to actually splice off of them and run some LEDs in here, here, and possibly in the bed too. Or I say the bed, the rear of the vehicle because it's not really a bed. But uh, yeah, slowly but surely. How? Oh! It's time. It is time. Are we gonna get any fires? Here, you hold that camera. This thing is gonna spontaneously combust. I don't know. If I lose my eyebrows, I'm gonna kill you. Uh, that's good for you. It's not sparking or anything. God, why doesn't it fit? That's what she said. Yeah. One eternity later. So yeah, this will be easy. Let me just slap this harness in there. And every step of the way has been a pain. This is like, in terms of the way harnesses go, this is a build your own harness, like a Lego kit they give you. It's not actually really ready to go. Why is that thing loose? Ay, 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 ay. This wasn't tight very good, okay, that's cool. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. All right. Nothing's on fire. We should have a live battery. I haven't heard this 150 amp mega fuse explode. But yeah, yeah, I mounted the mega fuse there and the fuel pump relay there. Um, everything else is not all draped across the engine anymore. I still got to take out that stupid thing up there. And there's a handful of things, but let's see what happens when we turn the key. Sammy, do you see smoke? Just don't say anything. I don't even want to know about it. Hey! Look, the ambient light works! Come on! That's a good start. That's a good start. Uh, oh wait, I need the shifter. Hang tight. Actually, let's just key it up. I don't hear the fuel pump either. That's not good. How about Bryce? Those are lows. That's Bryce. Oh my God, it works! It works! Look, look at the look at the gauges. Hey! Come on! All right, left turn signal. Nothing. Right turn signal. Nothing. What? That's stupid. That's stupid. They tried to move. Well, what the heck? All right, we're getting there. I actually think this column may be a big part of our horn. Horn works. I think the turn signals are broken inside the dang column. We weren't 100% sure, but they didn't work before. So that tells me the column is indeed the issue there. All right. We're back. So, I haven't tried to start it yet. I haven't even keyed it up. But uh, what I ended up doing is RTFM. Read the f***ing manual. So, their little relay activation, fan relay, wire stuff is confusing as hell. So I think I accidentally, well I know, I accidentally used this 901 accessory output to engine harness wire. And apparently that has to tie into a switch that has this 906 wire on the interior to it. Otherwise it doesn't work. So then I ended up depinning it from my plug, which these plugs are backwards and upside down <laughs> compared to how it actually is mounted in the vehicle, which makes it weirder and confusing. But uh, yeah, I ended up just kind of moving it to a random spot, which I think I made, I think I found that one. I hope I did. I don't know, I got 12 volts out of there. So now the relay should activate at least. So let's, 
Let's key it up and see what happens. That was uh, that was something. I'll tell you that much. That was something. Oh, you hear that? God, that thing pumps. Oh no, what the problem is now. Dang it. Okay, obviously something on the LS harness is now not working, but we're getting closer. Hey, woo! She's running. Now, that being said, it does say that I have zero oil pressure and that gauge ain't working. I'm gonna, I guess, see if that gauge will pop on and start working. I gotta program that gauge. But I do have RPMs. So like that part's cool. Uh, that tells me that the OBD connector is working. So that's the only place I can pull that information from. Uh, so I don't know why it doesn't think it has oil pressure. I guess I could put my scanner on it and see what it's saying. But I need to check the actual oil pressure sensor and I guess the wiring from the oil pressure sensor to the PCM. Oh no, we'll cross that bridge when the time comes. Hey look, the temperature gauge is moving. The temp gauge is moving. So that part's there, but these oil pressure sensors are a known problem. So we at least got temperature, uh, voltmeter, and tachometer currently. So I need to, uh, yeah. Whoa. I guess keep pushing on, but woo! At least it runs. We got some smoke. There was smoke coming out from down by the exhaust. I smell burning. So let's do a quick dive ski underneath there and see if we can't figure out if something's touching the exhaust or what. Or did it just get oily from me grabbing it? Uh... Uh, I swear no wires are touching it. I swear. Does that mean I'm accurate? No, it does not. Because they are. Damn it. Oh, look at that. I'm melting shit right up there. Oops. Woo-hoo-wee. Here we go. See, we got some blue skies above us. That is because the blazer is finally out of the shop. So I got one seat in it. It's getting ready to go to the school to get the floor painted and then we'll continue pressing on until it's done. Uh, I just wanted to throw out there, gotta give credit where credit is due. The old guy figured out the starting issue pretty much immediately. Uh, the 12 volt signal wire, I don't know if you just saw that slobber fly out of my mouth. Uh, the 12 volt signal wire that fed the PCM was not sending 12 volt in the starting position and it created a bunch of chaos so i had to repin a wire into the bulkhead conduit that puppy in run it where it needed to go because i needed to use the coil wire to power the pcm 12 volt ignition on source uh ever since then puppy fires up runs brilliantly uh, i still have no turn signal so we're gonna have to like pull apart the steering column or replace it at some point uh that'll be done whenever it gets back because i got a tranny to rebuild and uh, we're gonna go ahead and get this floor painted so that way we can get it all done at once and then audio system and a couple other things but uh yeah as we as we sit i haven't programmed the gauges yet and you can see the oil pressure sensors out on the ls so we'll get that swapped whenever we do it but uh temp gauge works voltmeter works fuel gauge is sketchy uh we'll get that set and uh rpm gauges work but yeah she she fires up let me put it in neutral oh She's rolling. Every time. Come on. Yeah, look at it. Zero oil PSI. It's got a little pressure, it just doesn't have a sensor. Uh, but yeah, I need to code that, code the speedometer. Uh, we'll do that whenever it gets back. And uh, yeah, for now, we're wrapping it up. Let's go into paint. Come on. <laughs> 